Eric and Janelle, the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you with his eternal love and grant you many years, many, many years. Eric and Janelle, it's been a wonderful joy and pleasure to watch you grow in your relationship. But most importantly for me as your pastor, it's been a wonderful pleasure and joy to see your relationship grow in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One observation I observed about both of you very early on in your relationship is your fearless embrace of any and all challenges in life, whether they be physical, mental, academic, or even eternal. Although your relationship is still quite young, you nevertheless have experienced a lifetime of events. And yet regardless of all these challenges and perhaps conflicts, your relationship has endured over these years. In fact, I would say that your love has grown deeper and deeper as a direct result of being challenged in these various ways. On your very own, you said to me that you came to the realization that the eternal forgiveness that we receive from Jesus' death and blood shed from the cross, given and distributed in word and sacrament, is the forgiveness that we need to give to each other in holy marriage. Sadly, as a young married man aspiring to be a pastor some 20 years ago, I had to be told about that gift. But you discovered it on your own. And I commend you for that. I thank God that you came to this realization that this gift of forgiveness is the gift in holy marriage that sustains holy marriage. The fact that you have already been confessing your hurt and harm to one another, and most importantly saying, I forgive you to each other, is indeed a demonstration of your spiritual maturity and your deeply profound committed love to each other. So again, it's been such a joy and blessing to see your relationship grow over the years where it's being challenged and stretched and forced to deal th with things that we don't like to deal with or things that are simply out of our control. And when it comes to the eternal things of God, you have taken great interest and joy to grow and learn more to be stretched and challenged and forced to consider the eternal things of God for your life in Christ. And perhaps this is why you have chosen one of the most challenging wedding texts in the entire Old Testament canon. The Song of Songs, or sometimes called the Song of Solomon. So challenging is this sacred book in the Bible that some scholars can't even agree upon its name. Now, to be sure, the Song of Songs is a very complex book in sacred scripture. It is written in a poetic style very different from our modern understanding. And in this way, many readers misunderstand and misuse the book altogether. Some, believe it or not, look for the explicit sexual content in the book and overlook the eternal message that God has for us in the true bridegroom, Jesus, and his bride, the one holy Christian and apostolic church. Certainly, the Song of Songs is a hymn used by God's people to celebrate the love between a husband and a wife at a wedding feast such as this. And although Solomon describes the passions of love honestly and joyfully, these passions of love are indeed blessed by God in a conjugal union between one man and one woman till death do them part. The overriding theme of Song of Songs is beautifully connected to the Apostles' words in Ephesians chapter 5 today. This sacred text in Ephesians, it has always been highlighted in the rite of holy marriage. As a pastor, I have always included this text in the service because it not only forms your declaration of intent to marry, but it also describes the eternal mystery of holy marriage, 
which draws our attention to the eternal bridegroom and his bride, the church. And so, in so many words, St. Paul says that a Christian husband and a Christian wife is a living icon or image of God's eternal love for his people and their reciprocal love of him. In this way, the bride indeed submits to the love of her husband just as the church submits to Jesus and his perpetual and eternal love that he gives to his bride. And likewise, husbands provide that love for their brides to death, just as Jesus Christ gave up his very life to death, even death on the cross for her. And so, from the very beginning, Christians have always emphasized the allegorical interpretation of Christ's eternal love for his one bride, the Holy Christian Church, as a deeper and fuller meaning of love between a husband and a wife, as it is described in the Song of Songs. Let us just pause again to hear the divine words of King Solomon. Right before he closes the entire book, this is the crescendo, the climax of the book, we are told. Chapter 8, two verses. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is strong as death, jealousy is fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If a man offered for love all the wealth of his health, house, he would be utterly despised. So just as the overall theme of Song of Songs is ultimately about God's love for his people, seen and understood in the image of Jesus, the true bridegroom, and his church, likewise these divine words from King Solomon have a much deeper meaning than what appears to be on the surface. There is indeed a deep theological challenge when it comes to these divine words. So when Solomon writes, set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, he first of all refers to a cylinder seal worn on a cord around the neck, hence the seal upon the heart and a stamp seal affixed to the arm, often including a signet ring on the hand, which was used to mark and legally sign property belonging to the owner. So if Solomon's bride were his seal, then she would bear his personal name and imprint, making her name inseparably bound up in Solomon's name, which means peace. And hence, the bridegroom and the bride are bound in one. And you're bound and blessed in peace. But on the other hand, if Solomon's bride were the seal that he would wear on his heart, then he would have the duty and responsibility to guard his bride closely and protect her permanently with love, just as Jesus permanently and eternally loves his bride the church. Although we could be here all afternoon interpreting these divine words, suffice it to say that the relationship that is suggested in setting a husband or a wife as a seal upon the heart is the same kind of relationship that pertains to Jesus Christ, the true bridegroom, and his church, the bride. The bride of Jesus Christ longs to be the seal set upon the the heart of Christ. She submits to Christ, not because she is his body and he the head, that's true, but in the simple fact that the true bridegroom Jesus gave up his life to death for her, and he will always, always eternally love his bride, the church. The church of Jesus Christ delights in the eternal gift of grace which makes her the treasured possession of Jesus the bridegroom. And so the church of Jesus Christ and her members, which form the body of Christ, are the imprint of God's personal name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is what God has done for us in the washing of water with the word in holy baptism. We are not separated from God's name that he put on us in holy baptism. We are sealed with God the Holy Spirit. 
So, from the perspective of the bride, the church, her submission to Jesus, the groom, is not a burden, a chore, some form of oppression. In fact, the bride of Jesus Christ is the very one who benefits from Jesus being the head because it is the Lord Jesus Christ who gives up everything, even his very life, for his bride, the church. Jesus is the one who loses everything, and the bride is the one who gains everything. Since Jesus sets his church, the bride, on his heart as a seal, he now is given the duty and responsibility to guard her closely and protect her permanently with his eternal love. And we thank God the Father that he sent his son Jesus Christ to love you and all people, that he was willing to give up his very life for you to death on the cross and by his glorious resurrection open the way of everlasting life for you and all who believe in him. And what is more, Jesus continues to love us, the bride, with an eternal love as he continues to speak to us his words and he gives us his blessed sacraments. You, along with all baptized believers in Christ, have been sealed with the promise Holy Spirit in holy baptism, and therefore you are not your own, the Apostle Paul would remind us. You were bought with a price, not with gold or silver, but with the holy precious blood of Jesus shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all our sins, given and applied to us in our baptism, signed and sealed with God the Holy Spirit, given to us in the sacrament of the altar where we receive his body and blood, and therefore you are indeed a part of the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the one holy Christian and apostolic church who willingly submits to the eternal love of the bridegroom, Jesus. Therefore, Eric and Janelle, be living icons and images of Jesus, the bridegroom, and the church, the bride. And so Janelle, as the church willingly submits to the eternal love of Christ, likewise submit to the love that Eric is going to provide for you. And Eric, as our Lord Christ lived for his bride and gave up everything for his bride, even his very life to death for his bride, so in the same way, love Janelle as your bride your most treasured and beautiful bride. Set each other as a seal upon your heart. Forgive each other as the Lord has forgiven you, because in doing so, you will draw all others to the eternal relationship that pertains to Jesus, the true bridegroom, and his bride, the one holy Christian and apostolic church. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and lives through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord, to whom be glory forever and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. God grant you many years, many, many years. God grant you many years, many, many years, for your help and for your salvation. God grant you many years, many, many years. In the name of Jesus, Amen.